Now your school might have apparatus hanging up somewhere, maybe at the side of a classroom that looks a bit like this. Uh, and this is a way that we can measure Young's modulus or the engineering modulus E for steel. OK, because steel doesn't have a very big extension. So what we need is this kind of vernier scale down here to kind of see these very small um, increases in length. So the theory, first of all, well, Young's modulus E is equal to the stress divided by the strain within that material. And in order to calculate the stress, this is equal to your force per unit area and the strain is equal to your extension over your original length. Now the extension can have the symbol E for extension or X for extension or even delta L for your change in length. I'm just going to leave it as E over here. What else do you need to know? Um, well, if you need to want to know the force or the, you know, the force actually acting within this material, it's the same as the tension in there, which is provided by the mass at the bottom. And this is something that you can change. So what we have hanging down is our weight, which is mg. So the force is equal to mg. Also, the area uh, can be found out by actually measuring the diameter of this wire. And if you're going to measure the diameter, you need to make sure that you measure it three times using a micrometer. Um, so you've got to, to measure that three times to make sure that you have a good average, because this is often a point where you get quite a lot of error uh, in that or uncertainty in that reading. And the area then is equal to pi r squared or pi d squared over 4, uh, which is just the same equation. So um, what can you do when you do this experiment? Well, basically, you start out with these two parallel wires. And this one here basically um, acts as a bit of a guide for this one here. And so it means if, if the room gets hotter, both wires get longer or they both get shorter at the same rate. And this is very much our guide. And you start out with a scale level. And as you add more mass, this wire tends to get longer. You know, obviously, you put more weight in it, it's going to extend. Uh, and you can measure very, very small increments or very, very small extensions using this method. So what you can do then is you can vary the mass and then you can measure the extension. So we measure mass in kilograms and our extension in metres. OK, so always convert it into metres. And you can do this for several different masses. Uh, again, obviously taking repeat readings uh, as you normally would. What you can then do is you can pl plot a graph of the extension versus the weight applied. And provided you did, uh, you know, got, you got some good results, what you should find is that you have a straight line that goes through the origin. So basically, the more weight you apply, the bigger the extension. And if we think about this equation up here, what I can do is I can rearrange this by bringing, by bringing the L up to the top and the A down here. We can also write that Young's modulus is equal to MGL over EA. So this is just another equation uh, using this one here with this uh, mg uh, substituted in for f. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, the gradient of this line is going to be equal to the extension over mg, but here we've got mg over e. And therefore, we can also say that uh, Young's modulus is equal to L divided by A multiplied by the gradient. So if you know the original length of the wire, which you can from uh, basically measuring from this distance up to the top where it's secured into a beam or something rigid at the very top, um, you've got the area that you've calculated by measuring the diameter at least three times. Uh, and then you've got the gradient as well, you, which you've worked out from this. And if you do that, you should get a value for Young's modulus. Now, steel is a hard kind of tough material. And uh, Young's modulus for steel is in the region of about 200 uh, gigapascals. OK, so that's 2 times 10 to the 11 pascals. So a really, really big number. So that's the kind of thing that you should be aiming for. What are the safety things? Well, uh, what you don't want to have is this mass here. And again, you might add quite a large mass onto the bottom of this to actually get it to extend at all. So you've got to stand back and you know be careful of your feet, but be careful of your fingers, and also damaging the, the equipment if it does snap. So first of all, you've got falling masses, which could be damaging. And secondly, you don't want to have a piece of razor-sharp wire if it does snap. Uh, coming through and basically slicing through the front of your eye and your eyeball coming out because that's not a very nice injury it's not the kind of thing to really sort of show the grandkids so um you do you do need to wear safety goggles okay it does seem a bit excessive at times because you think it's probably not going to snap but if it does it would do a lot of damage so the safety things are stand back from the weight and uh, try not to get the eye uh, get your eyes gouged out by flying wire but i hope that helps uh, and good luck with your experiment thank you